Threads are everywhere. They're on screws, bottle caps, nuts, and bolts. They're on 3D printed parts. Today, I want to show you how to use the right settings, whether it's modeled or cosmetic, as well as what all those settings mean. And I have a resource document for you. Threads are the spiral ridges that, uh, that hold bolts and fasteners and allow them to hold together. And so let's talk about how you can use this with Fusion. To get started, all you need is an existing cylinder. If I come up and search for thread, do the S key and look for thread, or if we come over and choose create and find thread, you're gonna choose this cylinder. And what's exciting is you really don't have to do much more than this. I could leave this as it is, click OK, and I have threads. Now, there's some important things I'm missing out on if I'm gonna 3D print this, or if I had something else in mind than Fusion's defaults, but the cool thing is it is that simple. You select a cylinder. Now, when I click on this diameter of this cylinder, let's bring it up so we can, we can see it. If I right click on the sketch and say show dimension, it's gonna wake up that diameter of this sketch. I can also just click on the edge and I can see that it's 18 millimeters. All right, so if I go to my thread profile or the feature down in the timeline, what I wanna do is select this face to get started, but then let's look at these, these options here over on the right. The first is modeled. What this does is it physically creates these threads on your design. This is awesome. I love that Fusion can do this, but you do not want to do this in some cases. When you're gonna have this made by someone else or fabricated, the cosmetic thread or picture of a thread is more than adequate. What you wanna do is call it out on your 2D drawing that all of these threads should be a certain size so that they know to either buy them off the shelf or to fabricate them for you. The pain point is that this cosmetic thread is incredibly fast, and if you had 20 of these in your assembly, you're gonna feel it if you choose the model. But if you're gonna 3D print this, you absolutely wanna use the modeled option. Next, full length. Kind of like it sounds, if you don't want the threads to run the entire length of the shaft, then choose to clear this checkbox. You get some options of how to set the length. I can use this slider down below to adjust it, or I can type in a value. If I said there was an offset of 10, it's creating an offset from that starting profile. So we'll set that to zero, and then we'll set the distance going back. Thread type refers to the different standards of threads depending on maybe where you live as well as what kind of fastener you're trying to create. I've created a reference document for this. I'm gonna link that down below. Feel free to go grab that and I explain the different standards and kind of their advantages. Next, the size. When I selected this cylinder, this is an 18 millimeter cylinder. When I select it, you can see that it's automatically opting to an 18 millimeter size. So it is going to the nearest default size that would apply. And then designation refers to the pitch or the spacing between these threads. The larger the number, the larger the spacing, and the smaller, the tighter the spacing, the more the threads, right? And you can see this would take a while to solve, a little bit longer anyways. Going back to the larger thread, class refers to the tolerance of how it's, uh, how it's made, and then the direction. Let's say you had a bike crank. And in this example, you can see that this crank is turning to the right, which means this bolt is continuing to effectively stay tight. The opposite is true on the other side. The crank is turning counter to what would tighten that bolt. Therefore, it's effectively just getting looser and looser over time. So if your bolt is traditional and normal, it typically will be a right-handed direction for right-handed threading and for tightening. Remember size is basically a feature for the next time you do a thread to remember this setup. Click OK, you got your threads. Now, what do you do when your cylinders are slightly different? How does Fusion default to the right size of thread for you? 
If I look at these cylinders, I can see that this one is 14.1, this is 14.25, 14.5, and 14.9. They're all just a little bit more than 14. So if I choose to thread, does it automatically do 14? Does it round up? right? So in this case, when I choose it, it's remembering the 18. That's not what I wanted. The cylinder again, and I want it to go down to 14. So I go down to 14. If we try again, this one, which is 14 point, this one is 14.5. If I do a new thread here, it automatically sized up to 15. And the 14.9, I would guess, would do the same. So when I select it, yes, it goes to 15. Now here's an important distinction. When you do a repeat thread, if it's more than 0.5, it's gonna round up, but you have complete control here. So in this rounding up to 15, I can come down and actually go all the way down to 11 or less. When I do, look at what happens. It actually redraws the entire cylinder for me completely taking over and adding this appropriate thread. Now, one huge gotcha in Fusion is with the thread tool, you're somewhat limited or very limited on where the thread angle starts. I created a, a nut and I used the thread tool. You'll notice that even though they are the exact same threads, they don't align. So when I've used this cross section to investigate, I can see that they're starting at different locations. So if I hide this for just a second, this bolt, you can see that it starts up here, okay? So if we go to the top view, you can see that it starts up just right up here. That's where effectively the thread is starting. And then when we look down below, the thread starts down here. So they're not starting in the same location, but I can rotate it. So if I rotate the component correctly to the right angle and now look at the analysis, it fits great. Now, this is a huge limitation in my opinion. I know that it's not a big deal because this threaded nut is still gonna go and work with this bolt because they will thread together. But I think that Fusion should either give us the logic of where it starts the thread or um, allow us to choose what point in 360 degrees does it start. I believe that was a feature that SOLIDWORKS had. This is where if you use the manual method, which I'll cover in just another video, that is where you have full control of where the thread starts. So just be aware, this is a limitation. Um, so you may need to, the workaround for everyone is to simply rotate one of your components or when you're joining them together, uh, rotating it, then you can get it to the correct angle that you want. So I hope that helps, guys. In a following video, we're going to cover how to 3D print threads and make them work well together. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.